Welcome everyone. Thanks for watching. My name is Lucas Turner. I'm a reporter here at the Rio Blanco Herald Times. <clears throat> uh, today I am speaking with Doug Overton, candidate for Rio Blanco County Commissioner as part of our 2022 election candidate interviews. Uh, formerly spoke with uh, Ginny Love and also interviewed Ginny Love, who's also running for commissioner and also interviewed uh, the candidates for Rio Blanco County Sheriff, Rich Garner and Anthony Mazzola. Uh, again, I'm here today with Doug Overton. He has been in Rio Blanco County uh, for, for many years, was born here in Meeker, has traveled around, has owned multiple businesses over the years uh, as a current business owner uh, in the county and is running on the primary ballot uh, for June 28th against Ginny Love. Uh, I just want to start by saying thanks for being here today. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for inviting me. So we're going to go through a variety of, uh, of questions here that I also spoke with uh, Ginny Love about. And they should be mostly the same questions, uh, but we're just going to see where it goes. So I just want to talk first about, you know, I mentioned that you're a business owner um, in the county. You've owned multiple business over the years. So maybe we could talk about that uh, by, by talking about basically your background. Tell me a little bit about you um, and your history here in the county and um, sort of the experience that you've had that has led you up to now, which is running for Rio Blanco County Commissioner. Okay, so I started out of high school, went to uh, college and came back to Meeker and started a business of my own with the help of a lot of local people that kicked in to help me. Um, I ran that business for a few years, uh, wanted to try something different, so I went overseas Went to Saudi Arabia for a while. Um, if you don't appreciate the United States, you need to go to Saudi Arabia. It'll make you appreciate what we have a lot more. Um, then when I got back from there, I bought another business in Meeker. Um, when I was operating that business, I purchased another business, which was the Napa Auto Parts Store. Uh, it was bumper to bumper at that time, and we changed it over to Napa. Uh, when I was doing all that stuff, I, I joined the fire department and uh, started running on the fire department. I was busy. And uh, then they elected me chief, and I was chief for like 10 years of that. So uh, I put in my 20 years there. That's back when we didn't get paid to do anything, so that was all on our time. Um, at the end of that... Uh, 20 years, I retired from the fire department and uh, joined the board, and I was on the board of the fire department for uh, another 20 years, overseeing the, the department and the, the tax base and the budgets and uh, the, uh, the stuff that goes along with running the government. Uh, the the uh, budgets, okay, in, uh, in uh, the fire department budget, or the fire district budget, we have two kinds of budgets. There's one that's a government budget, and there's one that's called a, um, oh, I can't Is remember. Is it like an enterprise budget? Yes, it's an enterprise budget. Okay. So it's a budget that's run like a business. Mm -hmm. So we had that for the ambulance, and, the, and then we had the uh, government budget for the fire department. So I have experience with both of those, not, along with running my own businesses, and I'd, I've always done all of my own accounting, so I'm very familiar with numbers and what it takes to make a business work. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, as county commissioner, obviously, you'd be doing a lot of budget. I mean, that's a huge part of the entire year. Yeah. That's what you're primarily responsible for as commissioner. Yeah. Um, you know, you talked about your your experience working with both government and business budgets. Um, with that said, I guess, how would you approach the existing budget situation? Uh, we know that revenues are declining and there's always going to be calls for cuts of this or that. 
I mean, what would you, what would be your approach with budget? Is that something that you've thought about specifically or are you kind of waiting to see? Do you have any thoughts on that? I am not going to speculate. Okay. So I have to wait until I'm there to see what, what kind of trouble we're really in. I know that revenues are declining. So I know that there are some decisions ahead of us. I would hope that my first thing that I would try and do in in that government as well as uh, as uh, private business is to streamline, to try and get more out of what you have, and uh, uh, do everything you can before you start uh, messing with people or, or services, because that's what that's what we're here for is people, and we need to to, to uh, keep our eye on the ball and, and serve them and do as good a job as we can with what we have. What would you say are some of the primary differences between um, something like a an enterprise budget for the fire department versus the um, the, the government budget? Or do you see differences? I mean, government budget is uh, you can a lot of times leverage your money with grants. A private budget, you either make it or you don't, and you have to. Uh, figure out ways to to make more money or or to uh, save on expenses and and different things. But government budget you can you can leverage it by going after grants. You can uh, sometimes uh, increase fees. You can do different. You have a lot more uh, flexibility in government if you choose to go that way. I would try and keep the um, cost of the taxpayers down because I think that that's that's my passion is to – Rio Blanco County right now is uh, got one of the lowest property tax rates in the state, and I'd like to keep it that way. Okay. So obviously property raising sounds like uh, on that specific thing, property taxes, raising property taxes isn't something that you would advocate for, uh, for generating additional revenue. Do you have thoughts about other ways to generate revenue, to bring more revenue into the county, or would you be more focused on um, cutting expenses, or is this something uh, something again where you're not really sure until you're kind of there? I wouldn't speculate. I have to wait and see how how things are are uh, laid out in front of me. I, I'm a problem solver. I'll solve the problem, but I have to see all the angles of it before I can tell you how I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, so obviously, the this race is um, hmm, let's see actually. So obviously, former a uh, former commissioner was just recalled. We had another commissioner uh, resign, and there was a lot of consternation within the community. Um, and there's still potentially is some of that. At the end of the day, there's always going to be some level of conflict or there's going to be uh, situations that you're going to have to deal with, whether it's with the public or with staff. Um, so given kind of the last few years uh, of, of the Board of County Commissioners and things that have happened, um, do you have any thoughts about how you might conduct yourself um, differently or – if not differently, just in general, how would you how would you manage staff? Would you manage staff uh, more directly, or would you have a more hands off approach? How would you interact with the public, et cetera? Okay, well, if anybody anybody that knows me knows that I'm I'm fair and and I will talk to you. I'm a I'm a godly man. I will treat everybody the same with respect and listen to them and. Uh, uh, that's that's the way I am. I will, I'm not going to change. That, that's that's the true me. The um, uh, as far as interacting with the the staff, I I'm a firm believer. I'm I'm a I'm a manager, not a supervisor, in my style of management. So I'm going to manage people. Uh, I'm going to the managers come to me with a problem or if I see a problem that they have, we're going to sit down and talk about it. And hopefully I'm, they're going to give me some ideas of, of how to uh, fix it and what we have to do. And we're going to work it out together with the other commissioners. 
I, I realize this is a three commissioner job. I'm not the guy that's going to solve everything. It takes three of us, and I'm not. Um, I realize that. Um, I am a guy that if if you're having problems with your supervisor, the first thing you need to do is go talk to your supervisor. If you're a, a citizen and you're having a problem with the road and bridge or the uh, some other department, the first thing you need to do is go talk to them. It's it's uh, jumping over the top of supervisors creates nothing but problems, and it, it's only fair to the supervisor and me. If that doesn't s- solve the problem, then then uh, we'll all sit down and figure out the problem. The supervisor, you, and the board. But I don't like um, backroom deals. Um, I, I, I want everything to be above board and fair for everybody involved. So speaking of things being above board, we like to ask this of every um, political candidate. If they wind up uh, in elected office, um, their understanding of the sunshine laws and how, how the sunshine laws will apply towards them. I understand sunshine laws because I was on the board of the fire district for a long time and we had to abide by sunshine laws. You understand that it's a law and laws are interpreted by lawyers sometimes 180 degrees off. Hmm. So it all depends on it's just a wide range of how you want to interpret the law or your your lawyer wants to interpret it. My interpretation of it is is that no decisions are made in in a uh, executive session. You have to come out of executive session to make a decision. The only laws that that we ever or the only discussions that we ever had inside of a executive session with the fire district were employee. Anything else? It was employee or if it was a contract or something that, that had to be, uh, you know, obviously uh, kept quiet. Uh, but the rest of the stuff, we never had a problem with it. And I don't think I would with the county either. Okay. Um, well, that's good. Uh, let's see. Talked about your experience, uh, you know, as a business owner. Uh, the difference, differences between government finance and business finance. Um, on a more of operational level for the county, there's been both in the long term and s- as well as some more recent discussions about uh, the need for a county administrator or manager. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on something like that? So a manager, in order to take a manager on, my thoughts are to justify that position, they're going to have to save us money. We can't just jump out there and hire an administrator to make my job easier. Uh, There has to be a a monetary benefit for it. And that's possible. You can do that by uh, bringing the county closer together and and not duplicating jobs and and a a lot of things like that. Maybe we could – I don't know. There's a lot of things that that could enter into that. Apparently, we have done a study. Uh, CDOT has done a study. Or not CDOT, but um, I can't remember what it's called. Is it DOLA? Yes, DOLA. DOLA yep. did a study, and uh, they recommended that we get one. And they've got a, a grant out there that will pay for some of the uh, initial startups. But um, I, I guess I, my opinion is I think it would work if you had the right person, mm-hmm. and the staff bought into it, the supervisors. If the supervisors are not going to buy into it or you have the wrong person, you're wasting your money. It has to be a group effort, and it has to be everybody buy in. Okay, so one of the things that affects uh, county staff administrators is going to be uh, employee retention or even for existing employees, um, lack of child care. So the two things or one of the things that can affect retention or even the ability to hire new people. Like, let's say, for example, uh, that everyone agreed uh, that it was a good idea to hire a county administrator. One of the challenges they might face at this point in time would be getting housing, um, you know, based on the sort of housing situation there. It's becoming a larger problem in the county and kind of generally speaking. Um, 
so for current county empl- or for current county employees or prospective county employees, uh, do you think there are ways to address those issues, housing or child care, through county government? Um, there could be possibly, but I'm very cautious doing that. I don't want government stepping on private enterprise. Um, if there's a way for the private enterprise to do it, that's the preferable way to do it. If there's no other way and it benefits the people, I might look at it, but I'm not. I, I think the Constitution tells us that we need to have limited government, and that's what I believe in. If there's things that we can do privately more effectively, that's the way we need to do it. Okay. I thought you, I thought you might say that. Um, so <laughs> shift the gears a little bit here. Um, in your opinion, this is your opinion, uh, is there is there evidence of election fraud in Rio Blanco County particularly? No. You don't you don't feel that there's evidence of that? No, there I, I think that the the people here um do a really good job. Okay. Um another sort of um I mean, I guess just shifting gears again to a, a completely different subject. Um, how would you manage, as a local business owner, uh, how would you manage potential conflicts of interest when it comes to businesses that you uh, currently own? Um, well, I'm, uh, I've already sold part of the Northwest Auto to uh, Lee and Aaron, and I am... If, if I'm successful in this, I would retire completely from it, and my full-time uh, job would be county commissioner. Oh, okay. I would separate myself completely. Um, okay. How do you envision the role of a commissioner uh, within the county, so interacting with the public and with staff? You talked about this a little bit already. Um, and then also outside the county at the state and national level. So inside of the county, the, the commissioner set policy and, and uh, uh, oversee things. The, the department heads run the county, and they do a pretty good job right now. We have a, our, our county right now is a wonderful place to live, and it has a, a lot of the kudos go to the county employees and the, and the, the structure that we have. We need to maintain that, and uh, I don't foresee any changes. I just want to uh, make it run smooth, smoother, I guess, than it has in recent times. And uh, as far as the uh, state and federal, they seem to forget that we're here. They'd like to forget we're here. We're a pain in their side. (laughs) But we need to remind them that we are here and be a pain in their side. And so I would, I would, uh, go testify, I would try and do what I could to remind them that we are just as important as the big city. All right. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I think we went through all of the questions that we discussed beforehand. Um, Is there anything else that you want to add that you want to talk about, potential ideas that you have for the county or, um, or just any other general thoughts before we wrap up? Um, no, I just uh, I want to thank the people for giving me the opportunity to do this, and if they do elect me, I will uh, I will give it my all. I, I do that with everything I do. Um, I uh, have have done a lot for the community. My my whole family has through uh, the fire department. The, the uh, uh, my wife worked for the hospital for a lot of years and uh, we both have uh, I, I can remember getting up in the middle of the night on a fire call taking somebody to the hospital and then they'd call my wife and get her out of bed to come in for the lab and she'd get the kids out of ki- out of bed and bring them in <laughs> because there was nobody at home so we did that for a lot of years so I you know I, I know what it is to be a public servant and and I'm willing to step back into that Awesome. Well, thanks again, uh, Doug Overton, running for Rio Blanco County Commissioner. 
uh, in the June 28th primary. Ballots are out currently. Uh, so if anybody wants to come and talk to you further about your ideas um, or, you know, the potential of you uh, serving the county and serving the constituents, is there a good way for them to, to get in contact with you? Um, just my phone number. If you put my phone number with this deal, I, they can call me anytime. Okay. If you, be, you can say it right now if you want. Um, 970-683-8637. And, you know, with all of the spam stuff going on, you may have to leave me a message if I don't recognize you. If you leave me a message, I'll call you back. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks again, Doug. I appreciate it. You're welcome.